Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Anime Yay or Nay. I am the Outback Al. I'm Yun and Yang. I'm Menvy Jetters. I'm Jaren Cosplay. And I'm Cozy. And a little light for today, but that's okay, because we're talking about... Well, I don't care who's here. we got to talk about this movie. Your name. You guys seen this one? I've seen this one. Yes. I've seen this one multiple times. I would hope we've all seen it by this point. <laughs> yeah. Or is Cece going to do that thing where they're like, I haven't seen it's it, so... One imposter among us. It's, it's always you. <laughs> like, we know. It's not that hard. But yeah, so... Okay, so this was... I did, okay, wait, so let me tangent real quick. Does that mean we need to play Among Us and every time we blame CC? <laughs> okay, I sent a thing... This is this is Patreon content, but I did send a thing where we should play Among Us, but no one uses their actual name. Everyone uses uh, completely neutral pronouns like you, me, we, they, and then we have to try to use it without using anyone's actual name. And we'll have us a good old who's on first. Yeah, so who saw you? You me or me you? No, you you! <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry anyway. to sidetrack us out of the gate. Honestly, hey, if people are interested in seeing that, let us know in the comments or something. I'm absolutely down to do that. I love who's on first. For now, though, and actually, you know what? It kind of ties in because no one's using their name because no one knows anyone's name in this movie. That's why it's called Your Name. So, they, kind they of. They do, don't they? Well, they yeah, do and they, they don't. It's, it's a plot point. They know their names for... Most of the movie. They know like their the names, but do they know yours names? I don't think they know my name. What is your name? I know uh, your name. Wait, what is their name? Uh -huh. This was Makoto Shinkai's uh, movie from 2016. Uh, who had seen this before we uh, we set it up for the podcast? Me. Hey. Um, but Cece? Everybody uh, but Cece. I think I saw it in 2016. 17 or 2018. I, I didn't see it the year it came out, but I mm -hmm. think I did see it a couple years after it came out. I think so, I saw it. We saw it in yeah, theaters. Yeah, as soon as it came out in America. Yeah. Down in the south side. Yeah. They I just know that the like there. movie just like completely was like a worldwide phenomenon. Like it broke Spirited Away's box office record for anime films. And yeah. It, and it, it took a bunch of Hashiras to break the record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. I I think, like, immediately after, because we had watched it, like, not late into the day. It was maybe, like, a 5 or 6 o'clock screening or something, and we got out of there around, like, 8, 8.30-ish. Probably something like that. I'm surprised you remember that. I do, oh, wow. because immediately after we got out of there, I lo I checked, like, my phone and that, and I'm like, there's another screening in 30 minutes. Do you, do you want to go see it again? I was like... <laughs> Yeah. Because I genuinely, the first time I saw this, I loved it so much that I was like, I'm ready to go see it right now. That's <laughs> fair. It was so good. It was an experience, too, in the theater. Oh, yeah. I've had I've had only a couple times where I've, like, been in a movie theater with a bunch of complete strangers and then, like, had an experience where I, like, looked at the person next to me who also looked at me and was like, ah, oh, can you believe it? <laughs> like, I think it was at the end of this movie... And, uh, weirdly enough, Pacific Rim, because I think it was the first time I'd ever seen real anime in live action. <laughs> Cece, you'll know eventually. <laughs> Someday. Someday. Um, but yeah, so. That being said, I think maybe there's diminishing returns on how many times you can watch it. Because I had watched it, like, twice. Yeah. And... I rewatched it so Cece could see it for the first time. And, like, you know, one, once you know, like, some of, like, that magic is gone. I agree with that. Uh, this is, like, my third or fourth time watching this movie. And on the one hand, I think you're absolutely right. You do not have the same impact you do the first time that you watch this movie, which is going to be true anytime that there's, like, a... a larger twist or tone shift that sometimes happens in, in movies. But at the same time, you do kind of like on a second or third viewing, you can kind of be like, oh, you start to like key in on like some details or like foreshadowing that maybe you miss. Like if you watch The Sixth Sense more than once, you kind of oh, like pick yeah, up on twists a little bit stuff. more yeah. or pick up on the clues a little I bit. I mean, does that kind of though, not to discredit your point, because I totally get where you're coming from, but like does that kind of, you know apply for every movie that has a mystery to it like uh 
like I haven't seen this movie, but I know Seven is an example of a movie that is like has like a mystery or the Sixth Sense. It's like once you know the twist of those movies, those kind of ruin it on repeat. I'm gonna say this: if it's a good movie, if it's a good movie, it won't ruin it. It will. Yeah, it's more just. Um, it will change the you, experience. You don't have that feeling, like. Ooh, where are we putting spoiler territory in? Maybe, maybe we hold this conversation for. You know what? It's been seven it's years. It's been a while. <laughs> if you <laughs> haven't seven. seen it by now, if you haven't so, heard of this movie by now, uh, what do you? I do you watch anime? What's going on? <laughs> like when when you get to the twist of, uh. Itadori Itamori. Ugh, Itamori. I don't remember which one. Itamori. Yeah. Was like three years in the past and it mm-hmm. was destroyed. Like there were a lot of stakes on that. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, Mitsuha fucking died. Yeah. And he's trying desperately to save her. And there's like a lot hanging on that. And like you're hooked. And oh, yeah. while you can still be hooked upon rewatch, like, you already know the result. You know it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I think, like, part of it for me, because uh, watching this back again, I was saying about, like, having the different experience and kind of, like, piecing together little things. I I do think the one real, like, uh, I don't want to say plot hole, but kind of, like, thing I'm scratching my head as is, at no point that they did they realize that the dates on their calendars were wrong. Yeah. Not even calendar, like their cell phones. They yes. were leaving each other notes. Yeah, it's like because and granted, you can set things to different stuff. Like I'm looking on my computer right now, and uh, it says what the date is. It doesn't say the year, sure, but so if it was just like this only happened one day, they might not have noticed. But it was like... But it was like two or three times a week. Yeah, and presumably, maybe for like a couple, like a month or two, two, three months maybe, that this kept happening. That it was like, at no point you never saw a calendar or yeah. a date on the news or so, this or that or literally anything that would indicate, for, hey, that's not the year. What's going on? For talkie, I think I would vaguely understand if... If you don't have, like, your phone's automatic updates on or whatever, like, the year can be fucked up like that. But, like, I, I, if if your phone is ever set ahead in years, like, you can't, you can't do that. Like, yeah. your phone doesn't let you. Yeah, you can set your years back to before the phone existed somehow, but you can't, you can't go forward. So Mitsuha, at, at any point when she's in Taki's... Uh, situation. I, w- I was going to say body, but that sounds overly sexual, and this is not nearly as sexual as it might seem, as two people are going into each other's bodies. But a what bugs me. Taki makes it a little sexual. Okay, yes. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, it's I c- the whole meme of if a guy turned into a girl for a day and vice versa, they would play with their boobs and dick respectfully. I don't know if it was respectfully no, res- is a respectively. No, I think respectively, the, yes. excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> that was not respectful just at all. Respectfully playing with your I boobs. feel bad for her. She started having to wear bras to bed just in case. Uh-huh. <laughs> um I mean to in fairness, I think they both thought it was a dream at first, so they're like, eh, why not? Probably. <laughs> I, if I thought oh, it was yeah, a dream, she, yeah, sure. I would too. She said that. Point blank. She was like, oh, this is a dream. It doesn't matter. I'm going to buy all these really expensive desserts. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, that's what he pays for when when he touched her boobs. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we've beaten around a little bit, and you should probably have seen this movie already, but let's talk about the plot a little bit. It is essentially, it's almost actually two different movies a little bit, because the first half of the movie is just a straight up body swap slice of life comedy that upon rewatch this time, I'm actually almost feeling like this was meant to be a TV show a little bit. Like, I could watch 12 episodes just of the first half of this this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And while they're body swapped, uh, per normal body swapping rules, they do Mm -hmm. a lot better as each other than they do as themselves. Yeah, the one guy was, like, his co-worker at work. She liked him more. When it was the girl inside the body. Oh, then... they can both get it. I think I think we've realized even the guy's buddy was like, man, he's cute today. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> hey, you're hey, good for you. You're opening up some people's minds a little bit. <laughs> I think, like, what did, uh, Taki's Mitsuha got, like, guys and girls, like, all over the place, like, they were all falling in love with her. Mitsuha was not bullied, per se, but, like, definitely looked down on because of her relationship with her dad. Yeah. And he made her, like, popular. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of wonder, and this just might be, like, one of those, like, Sometimes you, like, have, like, those thoughts, like, uh, what are they, like, thought exercises? No. <laughs> kind of, but, like, like a thought experiment, thought exercise, something like that. Thought, yeah, thought yeah. experiment. Yeah, where you're kind of like, well, if I switch bodies with someone, what would I end up doing? Or, if, like, this was the, like, part of it, I think, they do more as the other person because I think they don't worry about the consequences as much because it's not their life. So they uh, don't yeah, have you, the same hang so spending Taki's entire bank account. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, but, like, even just, like, the interpersonal relationships. Like, Taki would not have, like, tried to do anything with, uh, uh what was her name? The, uh, the other waitress at the oh. Oda Oka. Hang on. I got the thing up. Uh, what's her name? Miss. Miss. Oka. 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 Okudera. Okudara? Okudara. Miki. Her name is Miki. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we don't ever call her Miki. It's Miss Okudara. Yeah, senpai. <laughs> Guaranteed, he would not have made any kind of move. No, he was just taking pictures of her like a creeper. I mean, she was apparently aware of it, though, because she smiled for one of them. <laughs> but, you know, you have Mitsua, who's like, one, probably a lot more comfortable being around women than this potential it's incel, kind of but a, not an incel yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of incel-y, but also kind of chatty. Yeah, he's he's awkward. I, 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 I don't like calling teenage boys incels yet because I still think there's always potential for them to grow out of it. But every teenage boy is a little bit of a cringy. Yeah, he was just a little perv. toxic masculinity. Yeah, there's it's yeah, but I think since she was more comfortable with that, she was more ready to like do that. And same thing, vice versa. You know, she wants to act a certain way because she wants to be, be perceived a certain way. And Taki didn't give a Taki didn't give a shit. <laughs> so he'll start a fight. Taki acted like how Taki always acts. Yeah, they, they're both kind of, like, affecting each other's lives. They're kind of getting to know each other, but also kind of mostly dealing with this bizarre situation for half the movie. And then you have the, the big tone shift whenever they can no longer switch anymore. And we find out about the plot twist of she had died three years ago, and there was, like, some sort of time warp thing going on. Grandma knew the whole time. Yeah. Because it had happened to her as well. Like... You know, you're doing a lot of lore dumping, Grandma. This one never came up before. (laughs) He had to go drink the booze that she spit out of her mouth to reconnect with her. Yeah. I mean, it kind of goes back to, like, the, the, some, honestly, I'm finding, like, other connections between the other two Shinkai movies that we watched recently. Well, we can go into that a little bit later, but, like, I'm noticing a pattern between uh, this one and Suzume where it's like, we don't know how this works, so let's just try whatever. Well, I think it was definitely so, implied. It was yeah. the god of the town. True, but again, w- w- what does this kid know about how to interact with a god or like try to make something happen? He's like, maybe I just oh, drink this and hope for the best. <laughs> no, it was because the grandma told him when they were going to leave the offering, remember, this is half oh, of yeah, you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. So he's like, I'm not oh. saying it was an insane leap of logic. Yeah, no, but. but he was like, oh, that's a part of Mitsuha. Like, and that's maybe. the only part of her left that exists. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> in his timeline. Yeah, yeah. Also, he completely forgot who she was and where Itamori was, which... Also, can we go over that? Because even before he forgot where it is, he never bothered to learn what Itamori was called. See, to some degree, it, 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 that's one of those things where it's kind of like, it's a bizarre detail. Like, I think they mentioned that they have trouble remembering what 
all they did because it's essentially like yeah. dreaming for them. And I, I get that. I, I lucid dream every now and then. I sometimes remember I have dreams. Like 99% of my dreams, I forget the next day. I mean, unless it's really, really impactful. So like details like are going to be very fuzzy for like information. But I mean, he clearly remembered the architecture, the landscapes, that sort of stuff. Visual stuff, I feel like are, are sometimes like easier to remember than like what is said. In a dream. So I guess more my thing would have been like, oh, if you're having these memory issues and you're already mm-hmm. leaving notes for each other in their phones, yeah, why would they never have tried to text each other? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Here's that's one of those things where it's just like you know, as you're going, it's sort of like you start to see the some some little plot holes and like little issues here and there that you. I think we kind of hand wave a little bit because it's a very entertaining movie. Yeah. And sometimes just I'm, rule of cool, if it's entertaining, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hand wave a lot of stuff. I'm so, just like, I, I share a lot of calendar stuff with CC. Yeah. Is like a way of keeping track of things between us. So right, I'm like, course. I feel like if you were swapping bodies, like that would be one of the first things you were like, mm, yeah, let, let's get this laid down right now. Yeah. Like, cause it's, it's, they're doing it sort of like a pen pal system. When modern technology would kind of dictate, like, hey, leave your phone number next time, and I'm going to call you when I have a fucking problem because of what yeah. you did. That You're right. That should have been one of the first things. The one that gets me, and how did he not realize that the twist was coming, was that he literally went to... He eventually... Mitsuwa gets a date with... Miss Miki, but what Oda Oda Kurt, do we, b, 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 the lady oh, Udera. The, the lady and they go to I don't know if it was a museum or an art gallery or something they go to the place with photos of the town and he recognizes it but at no point did he go hey what's this place and then someone because everyone else knows what this place is except for him is like, oh, that's the place that was destroyed three years ago. And that wouldn't have triggered something in his head. But I was there yesterday. (laughs) Like, I'm just, I find it a little funny. Yeah. Um, One of the big things in Mitsuha's timeline is, oh, there's this comet that's passing by the Earth. It's really important. We're having a festival for it. Right. And the entire time, he's like, huh, I haven't heard anything about a comet. But, yeah, like, we I, find out later in the movie, like, he watched this comet. Like, he knew about it when it happened. It was a big deal in Tokyo, too. Right. That's true. So, like, it, that I, never connected in his brain? I mean, for one thing, he would have had to assume that it was happening, like, because they believe that they're in the same timeline. That they're ha- mm. that everything that's happening to them is happening at the same time. It, it, I mean, that's one of the biggest parts of the twist is that they're time traveling and swapping bodies. So, yeah, I know, but like, I feel like if there was a huge comet coming by, mm-hmm. they usually have a name. I don't remember if this one did. I think it did. Hang on. I feel like normally, like, Tiamat. you kind of remember Oh my that. god, they called it Tiamat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's... We should have realized at that point that something was going to go wrong. Yeah, for real. <laughs> okay, That's well, speaking flag. of going wrong, hey, uh, the comet splinters apart yeah. in Mitsuha's timeline during the festival and blows up the entire fucking town. Yep. Kills pretty much ever, almost everybody. Real bad Which shit. Why they stopped swapping bodies. Yep, why her phone was disconnected, why, like, yeah, she's been dead for three years, my guy. Not great, but, yeah, uh, so he has to find that out. Like, uh, I guess whenever the connection was severed, he also lost, that might have been the other reason he lost the memories in that. It's kind of weird. It feels very much like maybe there's, like, another hand in this, like, the god of this place is fucking with things intentionally to motivate people to do something. Yeah. So our entire next sequence of the movie is Taki just ditches his entire life 
to go hunt down a place. He can't remember where it is or what it's called. He just has drawings of it. I mean, he has a general idea of the area and the landscape, which... No, he he just... He was, he was looking researching. for, like, towns with, like, craters and stuff like that, I think. Yeah, which feels like it shouldn't be that hard to find. Especially, yeah. like, if you're, like, a lake in a crater. A lake in the mountains or something. I'm sure there's plenty of them, but, like... Japan is not you, a I big feel like, country. Yeah, well, decently sized, but still. It would still be relatively in that area. I feel like... I mean, they really don't say how long they were gone for. I'm guessing at least a week or two. Yeah. But but I wouldn't say he uprooted his entire life. I mean, he's still like a student, more or less. He ditched school. He ditched work. Didn't tell his family. He just left. I mean, I don't think he was expecting to be gone for months. But uh, It's hard to say. So, like, the whole sequence of him searching... Uh, someone from Itamori by chance recognizes one of his drawings when they're kind of yeah. like, mm, damn, we're never going to find this. Yep. They take him to the ruins and he's like, no, no, no. I was just talking to Mitsuha last week. Yep. Except he wasn't. And then but, you know. his friends think he's going insane, which this is also a part I don't understand. Like, I think it's very understandable of the friends that followed him. To think he's having kind of like a little mental break episode. And then they leave him alone. So he can sneak out in the middle of the night. Uh, I don't think they left him completely alone. They were in the room, but they fell asleep before he did. And then he left. And then they found the note. Well, yeah, they went to sleep while he was still like awake in a separate part of the room. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he was kind of bouncing back and forth, kind of being like, oh my god, this is all real, and this is blah, blah, blah. And then he was kind of like to uh, the girl, we can't remember, pronounce her name, uh, that he was kind of like, I'm sorry about all this. I know, I, I probably sound completely crazy, and like, he seemed pretty, maybe they were like, okay, maybe he's like, coming out of it a little bit. But nope. Because <laughs> it was real. Yeah, like, because, you know, they went with him on this wild goose chase for who they thought was a girl he was going to confess to. Find out the town is gone. It's been destroyed for three years. And the girl has been dead for three years. So, they, they're, they, like I said, very understandably like, mm, my guy, my dude. Yeah. Which they originally, I think, thought he was getting catfished. And yeah. uh, if I'm going to be honest with you, the fact that they actually found her real name and this place that apparently was real and all that. To me, if I was his friend, I'd be like, wow, you got catfished bad. Really bad. By a really <laughs> bad person. But they never go to that point. So uh, while he's waiting for his friends to sleep, he concocted the plan to go drink the, I think it's called Kochikawe. Oh, hang on. I got it. Kuchikamazaki. Kuchikamazaki. I'm probably pronouncing that horribly, so don't take my word for it. Kuchi Kamikaze. Kuchi Kamikaze. Uh, almost. Just, has... just change the K and the Z and you almost got it. He has the guy drive him back out to the ruins, hikes through it for like forever to get back to the altar because mm -hmm. the altar was like on top of the crater, but within another crater. I'm not really sure where that was. So if I'm remembering the geography, there's the main lake, which is a crater. The shrine is in a second crater... Okay. Beyond the rim of the first one. So this area keeps over a thousand. It's probably the same meteor every time. Just dropping another piece of it off. <laughs> and like, this is the third time this has happened. We should not live here. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but it works. Yeah. He drops back through time and reconnects to Mitsuha. And wakes up in her body crying while groping her. They really gave I mean, us a second was... where we thought he wasn't going to be groping her. Well, that was kind of funny, though. <laughs> and then the little sister comes in and he's like, the little sister! And she's just like, uh... She's lost it. <laughs> it happened finally. She's completely lost it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they try to save the town. Do their best to do that. They run By into terrorism. a couple of obstacles, though. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, no, it absolutely more or less is. 
But uh, is it terrorism if you're saving the town in the long run, though? Yes, I'm very surprised they did not get charged, but also, I guess that's, like, nepotism. May I throw out there, nepotism <laughs> might have an element to it, but I'm also going to throw out there, literally, like, yeah, the substation, they blew up the substation, and then an hour later, a meteor hit the place and half of the surrounding town. I'm pretty sure they probably were like, I'm pretty sure Dad was probably like, yes, the substation got taken out by a meteor early on. Yeah, and he, that's how he got them out of it. Maybe more important things to worry yeah, about. It, I feel I like, forgot. yeah. But when we say blow up, we're, we're not using it facetiously. Yeah, they, the they blew team, it up. <laughs> yeah. The guy best friend, one Cassie. of her teenagers, worked for a demolition company and had access to TNT. Uh, water gel explosives, to be specific, but yes. It was all for the greater good. The greater good. Shut it! Full yeah, motive, just... still terrorism. Some, <laughs> some light terrorism. Uh, kind of depends on how you define it. I know in America, we don't actually have a definition for domestic terrorism in the law, uh, in a legal sense. So, hard to say. It's definitely big-time vandalism. Well, I mean, their goal was to create, like, chaos and fear. Not chaos, just a reason to get everybody to evacuate. Yeah, which is chaos. I don't think that's chaos. They were, they did have a way of organizing them to go. Which they needed to make chaos to have a justified reason to evacuate. I think think we're going to go back and forth on this and we're going to get nowhere. But yes, Blowing something up is going to cause chaos, Al. A little bit. But I was at a school when a substation blew up by accident. So... Didn't cause well, chaos. Yeah, I guess you can also argue the people really didn't fucking care. Yeah, they were like, oh my god, the thing, <laughs> like, I heard a thing go off. What, what was that? Like, and then they were like, hey, this happened. Everybody evacuate to, to this place. So, yeah, I did. I think, like, I don't know. Maybe chaos is just, like, depends on what the actual immediate results of action is. I don't know. You know... Nietzsche says, out of chaos comes order. Oh, blow it out your ass, Howard. I feel like we, again, we could go back and forth on this. Yeah. Regardless, though, the plan almost fails until they switch bodies back. And honestly, uh, that that thing at the oh, crater okay, where but they... You're, you're glossing over, like, the most important part of that switching back scene, man. I wanted to talk about it. It's a heart-wrenching okay. moment. I was going to be yeah. like, yeah. Because, like... The plan, they thought it was going kind of okay at that point, but they were also like, oh my god, Mitsuha is going to be at the crater. I -hmm. can go meet her. Yeah. And Mitsuha woke up and she was just fucking confused. (laughs) I mean, wouldn't you be? She wakes up in a body she hasn't been in in a while in a place that she's like, well, why is he here? And then goes out to see that everyone she knows and loves is dead. Also, you know his body had a concussion. (laughs) I mean, yes. He fell and hit his head so hard, he spiritually peaced out. Yeah. To be fair, I feel like a couple people got concussions in this movie, including Mitsuha, who took a pretty bad tumble down the road. She bounced. Um, Oh, Cece, what did you call that when she was running down the road and fell? Cece looked at me and said, oh, she's speed running the hill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she did roll like Sonic, I guess. <laughs> um, she got to the bottom real quick. Yeah, but, like, they have that moment together where they're like, hey, this shit's about to go down. But before, like, we leave, leave, uh, let's write each other's name down so we remember each other or whatever. But he doesn't write his name on her name and she doesn't get the opportunity to because their little window of twilight between the two worlds ends and it's like oh god that was so sad the first time also uh we get to find out mitsuha went to tokyo yeah and not only did she go to tokyo she done found him yeah yeah so at that point we kind of know the plan's gonna work because mitsuha waited three years and went to find him but she went one day too early (laughs) And they hadn't started the body swapping yet, so... No. She was like... No, no. Yes. That was three years in his past. She went the day before the meteor hit. 
He was in middle school. He had a different uniform. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. My bad. He's also shorter than he is. Because when they meet later, he's like two, three inches taller than he was. Yes. And he's had that thing she gave him for three years and didn't connect that. Right. Yeah, Cozy kept saying that. He was like, how would she not, like, look down and recognize her own ribbon she wears in her hair every single day on this kid's wrist? <laughs> because, like, it was, like, a shrine ribbon, specifically, that only her family made. I don't know that he wore it every day. I feel like but he said he brought it out for special you could see occasions. when Mitsuha was in his body, he had it on still. God damn, I did not look at his wrist enough. <laughs> yeah, did he? I don't remember. I remember he specifically had it for the date because, like, that was a very important thing, and he was like, it's a good luck charm kind of thing, but I can't remember whether he wore it every day or not. Hmm. Oh, that's well, gonna that's bug me. Well, yeah. you know what? It's a reason for me to watch this movie yet again. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, like, obviously he didn't recognize her. Right. So she got, like, really upset spaghetti because she was like, bro, what the fuck? I mean, you know, Went kind back of understandable. And off all her hair. <laughs> yeah, is that a is that just a thing, like a trope? It's definitely a trope. Yeah. It's definitely a trope, but also like I feel like it's a thing. Like when you're very like emotionally distressed, you have like usually some kind of impulse to like change your appearance just a tiny bit. Oh God! It's when all the girls give themselves bangs. Yep. It's Gift of the Magi. She didn't have a ribbon to tie up her hair anymore. That's why she had to cut it all off. <laughs> LOL. Like, whenever I'm, like, in kind of a bad headspace, like, I usually, like, change my hair color or something. Mm. I feel like in anime, though, it's always, like, a moment of, like, clarity or, like, realization about yourself or a moment of, like, strength, though. Whenever they chop off their I think it was hair. a strength thing for her. Like, she was super depressed about it. I mean, I think no matter what, it's definitely just, like, a changing point. Like, a turning point for, like, whatever your character is. I mean, I think that just feels like a trope in media. Like, um... Mulan. <laughs> well, I mean, that no, serves some other purpose. She has to do that. <laughs> I know, I'm just... I was, yeah. okay, I was actually thinking about uh, Korra in season four when she got the short hair... Because she had basically tried to strip herself of everything that she was before and try to rebuild herself again. Also yeah. because she came out as bisexual and she had to get the bisexual haircut. I was thinking of like Sakura. <laughs> like I know it was a uh, practical reason she cut it, but yeah. like I think it was supposed to be a character thing too. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you're right on about that. Yeah. She was just cutting off, the, was it silver and or then, mercury? And then Eno literally did it too. Yeah. yeah. It happened a lot in Naruto. <laughs> Well, no, just them. That's I'm like, to think of two is a lot, hair. though. Like, <laughs> two it's for really like funny 700 episodes? You, uh, watch the Sakura episode again, and you're like, <clears throat> why did she not just stab the chick holding her? That's I a great know, question. Right? Maybe why because didn't she? Maybe because Sakura is pretty useless in that whole entire series until Shippuden, and even after that, they still sideline her because she gets useless it's again. It's just because she's Sakura. Yeah. This could have been a story about, about two dudes realizing they were in love with each other, but no. It kind of was. Pinkie though. Pie has to be here. <laughs> Pinkie Pie. <laughs> uh, okay. What were we talking about? Your name? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So they they do hobby. eventually save the town because yeah. she gets through to her father finally, which. Were we kind of missing a bit of a moment there? I mean, it's... She does not have a good relationship with her dad. We know why she doesn't have a good relationship with her dad. and But we don't really see... That, that scene might be the first time she actually interacts with him in the whole movie. It is. I feel like maybe... Uh, Taki might interacts have... with him, but that yeah, is yeah, the first but... scene with Mitsuha. Yeah, I almost feel like maybe we should have had some other scenes so that we could have, could have had oh, wait, a scene where wait. she convinces him. No, I remember. There was a scene with Mitsuha and her dad. It was where yeah. she was walking to school and he screamed at her to yeah. like, stop embarrassing him. But, like, Stand up that, that establishes the bad relationship. I feel like they should have had, like, an actual conversation at some point 
through part of the movie. And, like, maybe we could have had, like, a big emotional moment with them at the end where they reconcile or they, like, finally start seeing eye to eye again. I don't think they needed to reconcile. I know. And I don't think they did. But I think the moment with Taki confronting him in Mitsuha's body. Yeah, it shook him. Yeah. That felt good. He's like, hey, you're a little bitch. (laughs) Yeah. Basically. I don't know. Maybe I'm just looking for... Maybe I just want more of this movie. I mean, I don't think I'm at... I I don't think that's terrible to want. (laughs) (laughs) No. Uh, But, yeah, I... They they end up saving the town because because Mitsuha convinces her dad to hey help us evacuate everyone and they evacuate everyone and people survive and we actually get like a bunch of nice scenes of them like little cameos uh, after we get a time skip a five year time skip in to see that they're all they all lived and they all survived in Tokyo so great and they all but that was nice don't remember like, uh, it's. There's a couple, it's a bunch of like blink and you miss it kind of things. It's like whenever he's like doing job interviews, but they're also like intercutting shots of him like going around town a little. I think actually she's also going around town a little bit, but you are seeing like a lot of like the background characters, like the girl, like the girls and the guy who made fun of her. You're seeing the little sister who's a little older. Everyone's like doing stuff. Yeah. No, I'm specifically saying no one remembers though, because, um, you know, you kind of get a scene right after that sequence with Taki and Miss Okudera mm-hmm. where they're talking about, oh, yeah, you were just randomly obsessed with Itamori for like a year there for no reason. Yeah. Which he can't remember why he did what he did. And it didn't seem like they remembered either. Which, again, you know, coming back from that trip where he's like, why was I even here? I think like, they just chalked it up to a hospital, mental break. Please. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, did you ever talk to anybody? Maybe he just went back to being so normal that they were like, we're just not going to touch it. <laughs> it was it was a 24-hour bug. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well a, a two-week no, like bug. A virus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it was the flu. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, I mean, I guess he really didn't give them as much information as we had. So they don't know what all the stakes were for him as much. Other than yeah. the, the, the possible catfishing. But, yeah, Which, they also, like, they never told him. Because he's like, I don't remember why I was obsessed with it. They were never like, oh, yeah, you were being catfished or something. I mean, maybe that's why I'm being... saying it doesn't seem like they remember either. I are you thinking that maybe they were like, oh, he suddenly has amnesia about this bad thing that like happened that, that someone did to him. Maybe we just let him not remember. No, I feel like it was more of a they remember they all remember they took the trip, but I don't think they can remember why they took the trip either. Right, because it was drinking? probably. It, I think probably the uh, finding out about the all the dead people might have like overshadowed what the original memory of the what the, why we were doing this kind of thing, but yeah. And then we come to the very end of that movie where they finally find each other in Tokyo and try to run after each other. And I, I had they were just gonna walk past each other. If they did, I would have fucking started a riot in that theater man i know i can tell I just you ever been in a in a in a packed room where everyone holds their breath and then releases it all at the same time <laughs> that's what it was oh my it's god funny. it's funny he nearly did a, a thing that he did for one of his other movies mm-hmm. yeah yep. so they i remember get- those movies which is why i was like oh, don't you do this to me makoto shinkai don't you do this to us <laughs> They they start on the top and bottom of a staircase because, like, they passed on different trains. They both got off at different stations to run back to each other. Yeah. They find each other and they just walk respectively up and down the staircase past each other, get to the opposite end. And, like, Mitsuha was going to keep going. I think they were both waiting for the other to say something and they didn't. And it's like, God damn it, just fucking say something. So, like, they initiate the conversation, and it ends with title card. Yep. 
And then we pick up again in weathering with you. <laughs> yep. Oh, actually, fun fact about that. Yeah? Uh, it is not a continuous timeline. It weathering doesn't, with you yeah. takes place in 2021. This and is 2021. Taki and Mitsuha reunite in 2022. Oh, I was thinking because the picture book said 2020, 2013. It was a three-year time difference, so whatever's happening to Taki in modern timeline for him is 2016, and then it's five years later in 2021. Nope. Uh, they... So she was in 2014. He would have been in 2017, and now this is 2022. Yes, so they reunite in 2022, and Weathering with You is 2021. Yeah. And I... Tokyo is very distinctly not raining or underwater. Right. Right. Well, I mean, 2021 wouldn't have been when it was flooded, flooded. It would have been while it was raining early on before she got sucked up and then came back. Yeah, but, but 2022, you... it would have been the massive rainstorms. Right. You do have to admit, I can see where some people did think that that happened because there's like the scene on the bridge where it's snowing. And mm -hmm. then like whenever they meet up again, the ground's wet like it has been raining. But yeah, it's but not entirely think... clear how much time had elapsed between those points. So it might have actually they probably been just thought, oh, that girl's from the one movies in this movie now. So they must be all connected. I mean, of course we all thought yeah. that. It was just a cameo. And one of the ones we didn't catch because, you know, they were side characters. Um, Sion Teshi married and had a kid. They were one of the families they cut to in Weathering With You when the storm Me. started. Oh my god! Yeah, I did notice that. <laughs> was yeah, she the yeah, one who was... wanted was she the one who wanted a sunny uh wedding day? No. Huh. Dang. No no no. They were already married and had the kid, I think. Okay. Which is also, you know, that also further proves it because if that was in twenty twenty one in your name. They weren't even married yet in 2022. Damn, Koto Shinkai just playing with our emotions. So, you know, they don't have a curse that destroys every place they go to. Yay! I'm, that is a good thing. Or at the very least, maybe, you know what? Your name too. Our name. Where they go back in mm -hmm. time to stop Tokyo from flooding. Oh. <laughs> and then they get um, married and that's why it's our name. Yes. <laughs> Cue the Soviet theme. <laughs> Comrade. You're mine in our name. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's an idea. <laughs> you can throw it out there. Not a good one. <laughs> okay, fine. We won't do do my time travel, stop all the apocalypses in the Makoto Shinkai stuff. Oh, no, I was saying yours, mine, and our name isn't a good idea. <laughs> well, that's oh. the third one when so they stop the worms. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. So next movie is Suzume going through doors to travel into the past. Life has many doors, Ed Boy. Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. I was thinking of that door in the movie. I have to admit, when we watched it. I think this one, uh, of the three that we've watched so far, that might, we, we're going to have to compare it as we keep going down the line for these movies, but uh, this one might have the most um, I internal music videos for Radwimps. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. True. <laughs> I think they're all really good, though. Yeah. And I especially got a... Yeah, I want to bring up... I mean, the one in the middle with them just, like, ruining each other's lives is might be, like, so one of my yeah. favorite parts. Such a good... Like, uh, that's such it's a good music sequence. video. Yeah. Such a good like, everything. Oh, my God. Why are you working so many hours? You suck. You, you use all my money. <laughs> um... <laughs> But I want to talk about the uh, the first one that they had, the anime opening to the movie that they put in there that straight up the feels comic? like an anime series opening. Yeah. Yeah. That has the yeah. the really hype song, right? Um, I think it's the main song. It's zen, not the hype zen, song. Zen. No, that's the that's oh, the that's middle the one. Oh, that's the one where they're ruining each other's lives. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I really like. But the I feel the like it was a very trippy opening. Yeah, but it felt like an anime series opening, and yeah, I going along with that, the animation a little bit, comparing it to like Suzume and Weathering with You, 
I feel like this animation, although still beautiful, felt just a little bit more um, simple, a little bit more basic, almost like it was trying to be a little bit more like a TV show. Well, and I mean, I think the reason look, it didn't have that many moments to really show it off. True. I feel like those come a little bit more in the second half. And I think the reason for it might have been to add to the misdirection a little bit. Because it looks like a happy-go-lucky slice of life. It feels like a happy-go-lucky slice of life. He's, like, doing everything to to hide the fact that this is about to take a very dark fucking turn. He does it so much, he gave it an actual slice of life anime opening. <laughs> and he's like, no, nah, everything... The, you know what? He gonna reboot you dust. I mean, I was gonna... I was just about he to say... He gonna what, reboot what you Right up to episode three. Yeah, I was going to say, look what saying, happened to Maguka. He was saying, hey, I promise I'm not going to kill anyone of this series. And then what happened? Bit the head off. <laughs> Never trust oh. what Gen Urobuchi says. Oh, Makoto Shinkai's learning from masters. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, I feel like the visuals within the second act were yeah. very much on par because that's uh, when it becomes the drama of everything. Yeah. And that's where you have some of those supernatural, like, elements, which is where he really, like, kind of shines in mm -hmm. his animation department. Yeah. Like, the scene on the edge of the crater where they were running around to each other, like... Oh, you mean one of the many emotional gut punches? That is, like, one of my most favorite iconic scenes, like... The animation, like, the music, the entire, like, tension they built up, like, it was so well done. Yeah. And I feel like it had, like, that very distinct Makoto Shinkai style to it. Yeah, he was, I, f I really feel like he was saving those for those moments because they were gonna impact so much harder than... Some of the early stuff. But the early stuff has to feel... Ha you really have to love that first half. Because if you don't, it, you're not going to feel the impact. Because you have to care about everybody. You have to like fall in love with these characters. And then, like even I was saying, like I watched 12 episodes of just the first half of this movie. I don't care if they're going to do nonsense, a slice of life thing. They're great. I love these two. <laughs> I mean, look uh, at my I, I mean, look at my favorite anime of all time, Steins Gate. The first arc, of, like the first twelve episodes, aren't particularly amazing, but what you get to know the characters, and then once the twist in episode twelve happens, it's like, oh, oh no, I'm invested. So <laughs> this uh, movie shares a number of elements with Steins Gate a little bit. I never thought uh, about it, CC, but I can see it. When she found the movie, she found like a pirated translation, so the translations for like the notes and stuff weren't there yeah. and i did not notice how much of like how we came to care about the characters was just reading those notes they were leaving each other oh yeah because like that's such a huge part of like the comedy even yeah it's it's how they're communicating with one another and, and really unless you're reading them you don't get to see how much they're like interacting on a it, certain it level. didn't even translate Aishiteru. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> so wow. So she looked down at her hand and she's like, this doesn't help me. <laughs> she looked down at her hand she's like, I can't read Japanese. <laughs> I'm like, it says I love you. That's why she's crying about it. I I found the version that I had actually did a really good job with the, uh, the translating the notes because like, I think there was a scene, they don't do it very often, but there was, like, one where uh, they were writing something on their hand. It might have been the first time that they did it. And the little, the oh, English word... they were telling word, each other to, like, knock it off? Yeah, but, like, the English words were, like, being written out next to it in the same time. So it oh, wasn't just, like... Cool. Yeah, like, they did a real... Whoever did it was a really good job. I'm pretty sure I had a pirated version. Maybe it was the real version that someone ripped. I have no idea. But, <laughs> uh, in either case. So, actually, I want to prompt that over to Cece. How attached did you feel to these characters? Like, did you feel, like, the heavy emotional impact of, like, oh, yeah. my God, they're all dead? Yeah, yeah. Well, kind of. Um, 
supposedly spoiled this movie for me some time ago. Oh. oh like four to five years ago. <laughs> and then <laughs> when we were discussing it, she was like, it sucks that that this movie was spoiled for you. And I was like, you told me the ending. And she's like, yeah, but you don't get all the emotional impact from this plot and this plot point and this plot point. She just like kept going. I'm like, dude, we're literally watching this next week. But again, I had already spoiled (laughs) everything for you because at the time you weren't really planning on watching it. I was planning on watching it. No, you weren't. I saw the adverts for it. I was like, I want to watch this and I never got around to it. Can I throw out there that the possibility existed that maybe CC forgot what you had told them four years ago? <laughs> no, no. Uh, CC remembered the the twist. Yeah, that is but a like, very likely scenario. <laughs> but in this point, I was the one that brought it up. Yeah. Right. I forgot I had talked with her about this movie. Probably because I was in my feelings about it. I mean, how could you not be? Uh, just just throwing it out there, just as a general thing. Don't spoil things for people, and especially if they're really no, good no, no, movies. No, no, no. You, you just gotta I tell people, hey, go watch it, it's, motherfucker. When it's, like, anime movies that are kinda out there, because, like, I watch a ton. Right. I usually ask Cece if she's planning on watching it before I spoil it. I mean, maybe you should start talking to me about whether you should spoil things, because <laughs> I might be a better indication of what Cece's about to watch sometimes. <laughs> Nowadays, yes. Maybe not four years ago. No, yes. Yeah, okay, four years ago, probably not. But That's that's a good point. Yeah. And I do usually forget. <laughs> yeah. Well. Like, I, I don't think you could tell me anything about the plot of Makia. What? Makia? What's Makia? The <laughs> exactly. that I was there we obsessed go. with. <laughs> yeah. Well, fortunately, we'll be finding out next week now. <laughs> <laughs> Mikia would be a good one to watch for the well, maybe channel. We'll, maybe we'll put it on the list at some point. I know we got a couple things that we got coming up in that, but um, yeah, we might be able to get some wiggle room for some stuff. You never know. What else? What else is there? I feel like we've pretty much covered everything, unless we miss something. Well, okay, um, I do want to bring up because I feel like both you and I actually shared the sentiment, like definitely, like out of these three, like your name is my favorite. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um I think I think part of it is is uh it it just hits just right for me. Yeah, like it felt more emotionally impactful than a lot of the other ones. Yeah. And I think that maybe maybe because like the actual danger wasn't something like supernatural. Like it's something that could generally just happen. I think that's an element, yes. I I don't know. I think, like, there was just some other part of it of, like... The only thing I can ever think to describe it as for me is that the catharsis just feels the best in this one. Absolutely. I don't know if it's the build-up to it, but it just feels, like, so good. It hits so good. I think... And maybe, because, like, I'm trying to figure out why the catharsis is so good. Because there's there's catharsis in almost every movie. But some just impact much harder. I think because it's so slice of life at the beginning. I think think it was probably a combination of elements, especially for where I was at the time. Because, one, yes, the slice of life elements. I, first off, maybe Makoto Shinkai should make a slice of life series. Just, just, if you you ever want to try it out, I would love to see it. Uh, and maybe also if he wants to, I know that the science is great, but now I want to see him do Steins Gate. I don't know why, but I feel like he would also do good at that. But that's a, that's a conversation for another time. He does a really great job of that. And I think especially the big element of it that maybe we didn't see as much in like, let's say for our example, Susie May and Weathering with You. I think we got a much more intimate look at the lives, like the day-to-day lives they were kind of having and everything that was kind of going on with them. Not just with our main characters, but the people around them a little bit more. And it created this really, I don't want to call it powerful sense of normalcy, but like, because that sounds like such a weird thing to say, but But you just got, yeah, you got such a good feel for that. And then it was torn away in the middle of the movie. 
and be like, hey, all these happy, wonderful things that you felt so comfortable and just kind of loved being in, they're well, all then, gone now. Well, then let me ask you the million dollar question then. You got a million dollars? Well, no. but Then you don't get to uh, ask it. No. So anyway. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think it was? As someone who loves the movie so much, what do you think it was about this movie in particular that made it become the worldwide phenomenon that it did? Like, Makoto Shinkai wasn't exactly a household name. Obviously, there were seven meters per second, but it wasn't, you know, like a big anime movie back then. So, like, what I do you think, think it was about this well, movie that first of made all, a blow up? I that think it it's did? what I'm telling it's, you. It's beautiful. Yes. Like, that That's one of, like, the key points is that it was beautiful. But also, like, Put it in context of, I think this localized to the U.S. in 2017 ish. 2016. Yeah. Still, I don't I think. think it I think came like out in 2016 in the U.S. I think it did because he was trying to get uh, an uh, an Academy Award nomination for the 2017 Oscars as well, and he didn't get it. Hmm. They they snubbed him, which is this is a huge fucking snub, if you ask me. Well, yeah, they snubbed both that and a silent voice in the same year, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but, you know, like... It premiered fairly early, Society was kind of, like, spiraling out of control at that point. Like We did kill the gorilla. It, we're past that point. <laughs> I know that much. Yeah. We're, we're past the gorilla, and everything kind of started going downhill. Like, you had the Trump presidency. Yeah. You know, like... <laughs> We were not in a good mental way, and a lot of this movie was feeling good. I mean, even beyond that, it like it's weird to think about because like we have a lot of it now in these recent years. But like this was, I don't think it was as common for like uh, other than maybe a Ghibli movie for an anime film to be released in the U.S. in a big way. Oh yes, like, definitely. I think maybe did we see Boy and the Beast in theaters? I don't no, think we, we did. didn't no. see it in okay. theaters. Just like, on TV. But, and um, part of it was probably because it was such a big success in Japan. I think because Ghibli had kind of started coming over a little bit, but like 2001, whenever Spirited Away happened, and it was the biggest movie ever in Japan, they were like, "Hey, we got to bring this over," and it got like the Oscar nomination and everything else. Like that kind of solidified it for at least Ghibli of getting, like, American releases. But your name and a couple other things that had been coming out a little bit at that time, like maybe some of the My Hero stuff a little bit, because that was a few years prior to this, those might have solidified starting to have those anime films or films from a series or whatever, what have you start to get actual theatrical releases. Because I think, like, when was Dragon Ball Super's movie, the Golden Frieza thing, the first one came out in 2013. That was uh, the Battle okay. of Gods. And then Resurrection F, I think, came out 2017-ish, I want to say. My okay, friends are Dragon so... Ball fans, so I think that was right. Yeah, so up and around those times, and like you get that one for Dragon... I mean, Dragon Ball Z, no matter what, is going to have one of the biggest followings. They've had it for decades at this point, so I can understand them getting it. But yeah, I think we start I to get think... a lot more now maybe because a result of that and your name and some of the other ones you can also argue like there has been a noticeable cultural shift mm -hmm. to even the perception of anime yeah like before it was even though like there are a lot of people who liked anime watched anime it was still kind of seen as like this really weird out there hobby uh, I blame Toonami because all the people who loved it as kids are now adults. And uh, yeah. we're kind of the ones consuming all the media. We're consuming the media, but also, like, you know, the generations coming up behind us, like, it has become more normalized. Like, yeah, you're it, welcome. It's kind of weirder if you are, like, super hostile and, like, I don't watch anime because it's just cartoons. Yeah, and there's a lot of celebrities that are into anime now. I mean, hell, this is a different topic, but like Creed 3 this year, the finale of the movie was basically shot to be like an anime. Like Michael B. Jordan actually said that. So like the influence of anime is definitely showing yeah, more and more he's a each huge year. Fan. He, he modeled yeah. his, he's a huge fan. He modeled his Black Panther costume after Vegeta. <laughs> oh, you didn't you notice mean, uh, that? You, the blue jumpsuit with the... Yeah, Killmonger. You mean... Oh, he's like Killmonger. 
Yeah. I said Black I Panther because that was the that. movie. Yeah, I did not know that. <laughs> so, like, I think there were probably a lot of compounding factors, but, like, yeah. at the I, forefront, I think it was a very beautiful, aesthetically pleasing movie, which is easy to draw even a lot of people who don't like anime in. Like, people like to look at things that are pretty. Yeah, but going back to what I was saying about the catharsis especially, because, like, it'd be one thing if it just, like, came out and was, like, oh, yeah, this did very well. But why did, like, it impact people? I think they just did such a good job of building up the town, the characters, all that, and making you care so much that by the time the twist happens, it impacts you so hard, partially because it feels like it comes out of nowhere, and it's such a gut punch. And then when you have them save the day, it's a complete reversal of that. It's still a little bittersweet because I mean, Mikoto Shinkai does bittersweet endings for most of his movies up until that point. But then, then, they find each other and, uh, had he made that a few years ago, they would not have gotten together and I would have been so mad. Yeah. Because, like, I forget if it was, like, before or after we had watched this that we had watched a couple other Shinkai movies. I want to say maybe it was before and we had seen like five centimeters per second and a couple other things that were like, oh, this is going to end sad. I think I I definitely showed you five centimeters per second before we watched it. That one hurt me. But (laughs) the, uh, we get to the end and I'm like, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Don't do it to me. But then he doesn't. I mean, how do you walk out of that experience without like just loving just the roller coaster? I think that's why it it was so impactful and, like, why people loved it so much and how it became so successful. I do kind of wonder, though, compared to something like Weathering With You, like, the romance in this is definitely more, like, built up. Like, it has more substance to it. Mm -hmm. But also, I very much feel like it's kind of a trauma bond. A little, yeah. (laughs) Like, yes, they could have felt these feelings regardless, but they are in very arguably, like, it's a comedy, but it's a very traumatic situation, I feel like. You wake up and you're suddenly in someone else's body living their life. Yeah. And then, like, you go through all of this stuff, like, with Itamori, like... I do wonder how strong their relationship actually would have been outside of that. I really want it to work out, so I don't want to think about it. (laughs) Well, see, the thing is, is we don't know because they don't actually remember. So, like, if they got together at the end, which we don't know, they leave that very open-ended. You know, they don't remember anything that happened. They're at least going to (laughs) try. I... You know, I go back to, um, I think I mentioned this pretty recently, Speed, where uh, they're like, you know, relationships started out of extreme circumstances rarely work or never work or something like that. But I'm like, please just let it work. These people just just deserve to be happy. Just let them be happy. Yeah, no. Now I'm like, oh, is that like nagging feeling in the back of their head always going to be like, why were we so attracted to each other? I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, they, they really had not actually ever met each other other than through the the notes and stuff. And yet they felt a very strong connection no matter what. I mean, you have to, to some degree. But, yeah, she was willing to go see this person at the very, at the very least she felt that strongly about him that she had to go, like, meet him. To, like, see yeah. what was going on. And... No, no, no. I'm not... I'm I don't know. Just, I, like, it's hard to say. If they got together, like, you know, just kind of like that unsolved mystery of they're always kind of going to be, like, why do we feel this pull to each other? Like, I feel like it's also... Like you said, it's a bittersweet kind of ending because it's also very sad that they can't remember why they care about each other. I mean, it... I don't know, like, oh god, now with the memory loss thing, I'm, I'm thinking of Eternal Sunshine. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I think that's why we leave it off where we leave it off, because, yeah, what is your first conversation? 
What is your first date if it gets that far? What is like the long term situation? I mean, like, ultimately, I think we I can just, at least just be happy that they found each other. Yeah, no, I'm happy this, they but. found each other. But when I try to think about it realistically, I'm like, I feel like it set up so many potential issues for their relationship going forward. Maybe, but you know, their lives up to this point have been helped out by some god in a crater somewhere that has been steering them in relatively the right direction. Maybe, yeah. Maybe they got That's maybe they got some help. Yeah, that god's kind of a dick. Okay, I don't know that they might... they're a dick. Did they bring the comet down? No, but yeah. they they definitely knocked Taki over to give him the concussion. Okay, yes, but it was to save over five hundred people from dying. I but think also, it's worth like, a concussion. I, I don't think it needed to take their memories. Maybe. I don't oh, know. Does he remember the ribbon? I, I think... No, he gave the ribbon back to Mitsuha during the golden hour. Right, and his time. I mean, okay. to some yeah. degree, maybe not Taki, but Mitsuha, she would have, like probably gone to try to find him again and they're like that would have been a really weird situation being like i've known you for so long like i've never met you like what like i'm in middle school i'm 12 maybe, maybe to <laughs> well no he would have been 14 she was 17 i think they're like three years apart yeah, yeah three years it was a big plot point i don't know like because here's the thing had they not forgotten they never would have gotten together because he's not going to know she exists and she's going to have, like, a lot of memories of him. And be like, well, everything sucks. Um, and she has to wait, like, until he does his thing to do the thing. But it's also, like, there's some weird paradoxical elements to this. Of, like, because none of this could have happened if she survived. Yeah. So... Yeah, maybe yeah, that's the timeline dick. correcting itself. It's hard to say. I think ultimately we come back to what we said earlier about, like, we hand wave because it's really good. Because <laughs> it's really entertaining. <laughs> like, it did not need to choose a guy three years into the future. It could have chose someone her age from her actual point of view. But then, but if that happens, then everything's happening at the same time. How do you stop the meteor? Because you need knowledge of the future to stop everyone from dying from the meteor. Yeah. yeah. I maybe feel like... Maybe put them like a month ahead. Maybe. Yeah, this is why I don't usually fuck with time travel stuff. Uh, no, yeah. This, this comes up anytime any time travel thing happens. It's like... I want to say... Because I need to check it out. They, according to people who have watched it... The most, and I'm a big air quotes here, scientifically accurate time travel movie is a movie called Primer. And I think it's like a British movie. Hey, what about Interstellar? Interstellar? That's probably the most. Where he falls into a tesseract and like. Isn't it the most scientifically the... accurate? No, that was about space travel. Ah, uh, but there's and, time and... travel. Yes, when you really there was, think there about it, time's yeah, just a social construct. I'm talking about so. people using a time machine. Oh, okay. Apparently, so time the machine. most theoretically accurate movie is Primer. So I'm going to have to check that out to see what's up. But apparently Primer is also well, an extremely let's... confusing movie. So... Nah, clearly the most accurate movie is the Back to the Future trilogy. Clearly. You just need <laughs> yeah. to get up in the DeLorean with... 80, with uh, 88 miles eight, per hour. Yep. <laughs> and then fuck your mom. We just need to be friends with a disgraced nuclear scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we probably run our course of everything. Does anyone have anything else to say about this movie? Yes, I think I audibly cheered the first time they were like, the comet then turned into a meteor and crashed into the town. I was like, yes, thank you. Stop saying it was a comet because if it crashed into the earth, it was a meteor. Those are different things. So just to be clear, for all of you in the audience, Cece was cheering for the meteor in this movie. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was cheering for the friend who called it a meteor. <laughs> Cece was cheering for accurate labels. <laughs> I like space. Okay. Well, I think that's about it. I think, are, are we all a yay? Yeah. Yeah. Yay for your uh, name. Clearly it's a bat. <laughs> and well, knows how to draw sky. 
damn right he does. Let's see if he can continue to do that in uh, next week's movie. As you kind of noticed, we've been going in reverse chronological order for a lot of these films from Makoto Shinkai, and that means next up we got The Garden of Words. I want to say we saw this one. This is one about the, uh, yeah. the teacher and the student mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a... Uh, I think it rains a lot again. There's a lot of rain. There's a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get to that next time. So we'll see you guys then. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoy this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!